the Lion of Mag Podcast. This is Tapes on Mag. The games! Alrighty, back to part two of the Nintendo Direct Breakdown. So they started off uh, pretty well. The second half stayed just as well. Uh, the next announcement was this one, which was uh, I Shin Megami remember. Tensei Cross yeah. Fire Emblem. I I really don't care about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a, a, a flying shit about this game to be honest. I know people are hyped as hell. What do you think, yeah. Aaron? Um, no, I'm not exactly hyped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think it's it's an important game for Nintendo to have these kinds of wacky they need titles. Yeah. Um, it looks know, people cool. Really enjoy Fire Emblem. I love the fact like the uh, I like when games take an artistic step away. The fact that this game has two aspects. So it's not just, hey, here's an RPG. It's a fantasy game and an everyday life. So you actually yeah. will be like a kid walking around school. And I love the artistic point where the all the other non-important characters are just like silhouetted in, in, um, in a color. Yeah. I just think that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's I've never really heard of a game that goes so... F- like the juxtaposition in levels. Like, oh, here I am yeah, in school. So. Okay, here I am fighting like a robot. Now. Yeah, I think that's the two games crossing over. I mean, I've never played either of them. Yeah. It looks like it's got some really cool, interesting aspects. I think it's just for a different market not yeah. only for us. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think Fire Emblem is, is getting to that point where it's, where it's getting that Western appeal. And, yeah. and also Shin Megami Tensei. The last uh, game that came out there was one that got a lot of buzz um, and generated a lot of people just trying it out for the first time. Was so, that on PlayStation? Uh, I think so. I, th- I think PS3 it was. Or I think, yeah. I it was PS2. No, I think they've, they've definitely got a PS3 one um, that's come out for it. So I think to cross the two games together seems like quite a wacky sort of thing. And I, from Nintendo, I wouldn't expect anything yeah. less. I just think for those people that were really clamouring to hear more about it, it's good that they mentioned it at this direct, yeah. ultimately as well. They, they really yeah. needed to show people that it's still It's still existing. coming out. We don't want another, um, you know, The Last Guardian. You know, this looks whether or this, not that's coming out game, on PlayStation. Yeah. It looks... I played one like Battle this frame, years man. ago. Uh, it, oh, it's so Speaking cool. of another one of those games that got announced and hasn't, re- we haven't really seen much of is, is Fatal, Fatal Frame, Frame was yeah. one yeah. of them. Fatal Frame, I think, was one that was announced as a, you know in a launch window kind yeah. of thing, and have we haven't heard of in a, in a while. So it's so important that that game comes out to the other side of the world, like not just yeah. Japan, because Fatal Frame's huge. There hasn't been a good scare game for a while as well. Yeah, I mean, I'd and definitely I, buy it if it came like I'd I, play I it. think it looks really cool, and the fact that I they're incorporating the gamepad, yeah. mm. like uh, yeah. it's so cool. I, I like I like the fact that you look around with the gamepad. Like, uh, what's the game? There's one of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's scary. Let's not get into that. Now we're disappointed, yeah. (laughs) Um, But there's one of the games, uh, it's out already. I can't remember what it is right now, but uh, the gamepad, you can actually look around the entire room with with it. Game Warrior. Oh, no, it's um, it's, uh, the ghost game from Nintendo Land. Oh, um, so like, you mean the Luigi's Mansion? Oh. Yeah, yeah, where you can actually look around with the camera. And um, it, you can that. pan 360 degrees rather than just that sort of 180 mm, arc yeah. that most games have. But I think that's really cool. The console is a lot more with it. It is. It is tough though because I think you know, it, it, there's that thing of like, well, should they do more with the gamepad, or should it just be this idea of you know, I, ju- I can just play on the gamepad with traditional mm, controls yeah. and have someone else use the TV. I really think that feature is quite empty. Just yeah, today, I is. was I was racing on Mario Kart, playing a few tracks while watching TV. So to have that kind of multitask thing, yeah. I don't know. On I see both note, sides of it. I grinded for days and got my my Mario Kart online score to like over 6,000. Get your tissues then, out, everyone. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I got the bug where you lose all your data. So not only did I unlock every trophy on every um, CC, including mm-hmm. reverse, but I had like over 6,000 online score and it just left and I can't get it back. And I'm, I'm not, I don't think I've even done a single online one since then. It just broke my heart. Yeah, tough, I, was, yeah. I was like it 20 coins really away shatter. from having the, the gold glider. I've had that. I've, I've lost my save file due to my own sort of saving to a USB thing. So I've had similar things. But I was it just on the Wii. On I didn't even do anything like that. It was just the Wii. It, it's really affected him, as you can see. <sighs> yeah, I think, you know, so like, the next game we got is Box Boy. Box Boy. Box so you bought it. I bought it. I played through the first three worlds. And it's how, how getting really worlds, hard. How do the worlds wow. work? Like, is a world one level or is world there is multiple six levels? levels? Okay. So we got here. Oh, yeah. Have you found it challenging? Yes. 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 Like it's. It looks like it can have that aspect where it's like you can really be stuck at some points. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it's like a deceptively simple sort of concept, yeah. but um, but it can so be. You can see those uh, um, 
sorry to cut you off there. No, no, that's fine. The crowns there. Yeah. That you collect those in every level. There's one or two of so far in every level. But if you use too many blocks, you will not be able to collect the coins, the, the, the okay. crowns anymore. So you, you have like a certain amount. So stop you, you just going lower, lower, You can lower. spend yeah. like 10. Yeah. And if once you spend 10, you can't get the crown anymore. It just disappears. So wow. Okay, that's really cool. I'll let you guys play later. How much is it? Yeah. It was six bucks, six 50. Bucks. That's... See that's good. Again, that's good price. Cheap money, uh, cheap, <laughs> cheap money. Cheap money. <laughs> cheap game, and you can just do that with, you know, most people who have put money on an account will just have that left over. You know, speaking of another sort of indie title, but from published from Nintendo themselves, we're looking at Pokemon Rumble World, the next sort of iteration in the in the Pokemon Rumble franchise. You know, look as a long people are always going to buy Pokemon fan. games. Yeah. Okay. People are always going to buy them, but I'd, it's just tough for me because I don't buy too many of the side games sure. um i i kind of tend to stick to the main the main sort of game i bought one the last game one year and that's it. yeah i bought the last one they released on wii u i played it for a bit it's the games aren't linear enough like there's so much going on that you can't just play through it like you'll play the same level seven or eight times because you want to get all the pokemon in it yeah and the difficulty level it scales quite highly in the one i have mm. i think what this one has is the fact that it's freemium and that is really good because this is a game I would play if it was free. I yeah. bought the last yeah. one because it was on sale and I, was, I felt sort of like I had to buy it as a Pokemon fan. But yeah, the fact that it's free really, really takes it out. I obviously want to see... Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. I want to see how much you can like justifiably play it without buying stuff. Because like, obviously all freemium games need to be fun to play that's what gets you addicted yeah. and makes you buy stuff. They have to get you addicted. But that being idea. said, I would like this game to be passable without paying any extra money. Yeah. My, my concern is, with those freemium games, is you've got Pokemon Shuffle, which is also like a Pokemon uh, match, match three, or, yeah. yeah kind of game that's also the premium game now. And it's, and it's this idea of, I don't want to, them to think that that's the only route you can go down with these Pokemon games. But look, I don't play the side games. I do play Pokemon Shuffle, but... Again, it's just, you know, something I don't take very seriously. Another title they're showing us here is uh, Puzzles and Dragons. Well, there you go, another side game. Uh, this Mario one, I, I've i never heard of this game until I saw this. It looks really fun. I have played it on iOS, Puzzles and Dragons, and look, it's it's big money in Japan. It's is This it? game is, yeah, it is. They're really it's, into They are really into Puzzles and Dragons. So much so that this, you know, Gung Ho is like one of the largest sort of gaming companies Due to due to puzzles and yeah. dragons. Is that Spike, by the way? No, that that's uh, that was Roy. That's not Roy. That. That's no, I think a, that's that's Roy. I think no, that's, that's Roy. That's Spike. Spike's, Spike's no, not a... That's that's Mario Land Roy. Like not yeah. not new Roy okay. with glasses. That's like original Koopalings Roy. Okay. But yeah, so like I think the thing is puzzles and dragons. This game, uh, I don't know if it's going to make me make those inroads in the Western world, but I think through having that Super Mario Brothers moniker on it, yeah. you you're going to sell copies. You're I'd like to copies. see these available separately for a cheaper price. I I, I couldn't justify thirty dollars for both these games when I'm only ever going to play the Mario one. Mm. I, I think just, I, I think will use to play this. I just think thirty dollars is is a good price point. Uh, you know, for them with this kind of game because. It is tough because people can make the argument, oh, you know, it's available on mobile mm. um, with, with, with sort of puzzles and dragons. But I think to have a Super Mario game, $30 is, is and, 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 you know, have them feel like a complete package as well. I, I don't know. I think they're going to sell a lot of copies with it. And it's just one of those sort of stopgap games in between bigger releases. Yeah. Um, and, oh, so it's coming out on eShop. I don't know if they're making cartridge forms for it. I know they are. They've said uh, they've said that they're releasing it as well because okay. it's said available in stores, blah, 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 blah. I think okay. they're talking about that, yeah. Okay. And well, they're, they're bringing out demos and stuff like that, yeah. which will obviously Giving people a go it's with it. It's got the over, uh, overworld map and everything. Like yeah. This looks cool. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. It's another one of those games where it looks cool. I've just never played it. <laughs> yeah. It's just you have to... It's I think because it's one based on a TV show, so... This uh, Attack on Titan Creepy game is sense. based on... Does anyone here follow Attack on Titan? No. No, no, no. no I've not seen it. Uh, but I do know it's it's uh, it's created by Mike McFarland and it's yeah. it's it's sort of got a Western spin is on it. Is it just a game it's, series or is it, is it an It's anime? an anime series. Oh, yeah, it's an anime series. And it's oh, very... Okay. Um, it's quite, popular, it's quite a popular anime, yeah. Yeah, it's very sort of well received. I think it's kind of a successor to, I want to say, Evangelion in a, in, in a bit um, of a way. I'm not or? too sure. Yeah. Fair enough. So that one's coming out in May. 
Yeah, Atlas tends to uh, publish a lot of the Nintendo sort of more Japanese sort of titles, uh, and I think Atlas has probably been one of the biggest supporters for Nintendo. All right, so we got Steam. On 3DS. Uh, so Steam. Name Steam stuff showing here. I actually think it looks really cool. I I gotta buy it. Like it looks really cool. It's sort of got a um an old fashioned feel to it because obviously it's kind of made in a way to be like the sort of old eighties style. It's basically, it's basically, yeah. I would call it anime steampunk, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, it's just a lot of that, and, and sort of into the decision to sort of integrate the amiibos through Fire Emblem. Yeah, it's great that, again, they're incorporating the amiibos. So did, anyone, did anyone play um, Professor Layton? I have played Professor Layton. So it's made by Intelligent Systems. It's not, same guys it's not very it. similar at all. Though. No, it's not at all, no. It's just... Would well, you say it's maybe more akin to Advance Wars then from Possibly. Intelligence Yeah, systems. from what I've played and what I've seen of that. I like that the game didn't come with speed up built in. Yeah. You had to sit yeah. through it. What's really interesting is the fact that standard DS you can fast forward, 3DS you can fast forward like two times, and then 3DS you can fast forward three times. Yeah. I love it. Like, if you have a standard DS console... You can fast forward the enemy's attack. If you have a 3DS, you can fast forward it even faster. And if you have a new 3DS, you can fast forward it really? even faster yeah. than that. I did not know that. That's, that's, that's so just weird. because of the console. It's such a weird thing to have. It's <laughs> but it's but it's interesting, right? It's really it's good to see that you know they're actually taking advantage and having that tangible advantage. Yeah. With hardware. Well, I mean, if you have a better system, it should be able to do better things. Uh, next thing, they're going right into the Street Pass again. Now, I personally don't use Street Pass that often. When I first got my original DS, I did quite a lot of puzzle stuff. And that's before everyone had all these like hotspots where you could automatically get 10 passes. Um, and I completed a couple of puzzles. But when I got my she second wearing DS... Hat, sorry? sorry? Is she wearing an Inkling hat? I think she was, <laughs> I, yeah. It's yeah, 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 a squid hat, yeah. 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 Um, so the two new games... Um, so as someone who... Plays the street, played the street pass games <laughs> religiously. The street pass. Every time I go to a convention, uh, I bring my 3DS with me and spend my time street passing. I am addicted. Um, so the games Nerd. are Battleground Z. Can't help it. <laughs> it's Battleground Z and Ultimate Angler. So we've got one that's kind of a, a cute, cool cutie that. sort of zombie uh, hack and slash action sort of thing, and we've got what one that's happening? a fishing one. I think. Both look pretty good. Um, I'll be spending spending my money for them. I um, don't like this premium thing. It, it seems like sense. it's not needed. Yeah. It should be just an included thing. Like, oh, look, you can uh, you can collect people's birthdays now. Right. Who cares? I think that's, I, that's quite odd. I don't know why <laughs> they decided to include it. Unless you get something really cool every time you fill a month, and then like once you fill the entire year, they're like, okay, now here's like unlimited coins for all your all your me games. <laughs> no, um, no, but they'll never do that. What they really need to do... But what they really need to do is up the limits in terms of the straight passes. I, you know, I'll go to a convention, I can only have 10 at a time. I think really, we're yeah. Ultimate yeah. Angler, Battleground Z and the Me Plaza um, available for 4 dollars each, was it? Yeah. 4 dollars yeah. or, or you can get... buy a pack for seven ninety nine. I think price is a little steep for that. I think the games are... They're probably, I don't is that Australian? Big that, I don't think that's Australian. That, that no, that's probably, so it's probably a little bit more. So it's going to be probably about, I reckon, seven ninety nine for one and then like... Uh, Thirteen ninety nine, oh, probably like eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine for both. But I, I think it's too much just for those games. I mean, that's from somebody who doesn't play them. Maybe right. you would pay for. Them, I think, but. I think that's a fair price. Honestly, I do. Yeah, I think enough. the hours of enjoyment you, you can get from it. If the games are, you know, fun enough that you want to play them, I just really want to see them update so I can have more than ten in my plaza at any given yeah. time. Because um, it just makes the management of it so laborious when you have to like whip it out. And play now. I'm gonna to have to play two more games. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before clearing out my street passes, so. I mean, 20, 20 is, would be obviously twice as good, but I don't see why you couldn't have fifty. No, like, I can't see it either. Yeah, definitely. maybe. I think, or maybe even make it a new 3DS sort of exclusive yeah. feature that, as well. Or that make that the premium. Like doing premium. That. Yeah. You buy the premium, and then you can have you can store fifty. That justifies is this still the, the price of it. Yes, yeah, this is Xenoblade. This is now. How do you guys feel about Xenoblade? I've never played it. I hated Shulk when I first saw him, but that probably is only because I never saw him before. <laughs> I, I think it's an interesting series now that I know a bit more about it. Again, one of those games I'll probably never play, but I can see how people like it. It's tough for me because I think Xenoblade is, is one of these games that they really needed to show off 
uh, in, in some ways why they have decided to bring out it for new 3DS only. I like that the bad guy's name is Metal Beast. I yeah. think that's pretty cool. The other one's called Zord. Like, <laughs> yeah. Zord, really? Like X O R D. Right. Like Mega Zord from Power Rangers. Yeah. Mega Zord. <laughs> I just think, I don't know, I. I don't see them coming out with more new 3DS titles only. Yeah. Uh, I don't see this lighting the world on fire in terms of sales. Do you think uh, it's Nintendo's stab at creating something like maybe Final Fantasy? Or? I think there's definitely elements I can see. Yeah. But it's not, it's, well, it's, I guess, is it turn-based or is it I'm open? Not sure, not sure. It's open world, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, have you guys seen the Xenoblade Chronicles X? Yeah. That for yeah. Wii U, so that it's obviously the, the prequel to that. Well, I think it's cool that they've, they're releasing it on Wii U and... Yes. Well, the reason for that is, I imagine when it when it got released on Wii, it was sort of towards the end of the yeah, life it was cycle. The end, yeah. It was a rare game to get. It wasn't very high profile. It was sort of, it's sort of not a... that talked about. I think now they've realised, you know, they've integrated Shulk into Smash Bros. Shulk's been, I think, quite well received as a character yeah. in Smash Bros. I think that's People are more willing to give a game like this a go now. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite know how he'd go, but he has been well received. You're right. He's so, a unique character. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Cool. So he's a favourite, and I think, yeah, I th- it'd be interesting to see, but again, I think that's probably going to be the only new 3DS game we're going to get. I don't think there's going to be too many more, um, similar to how the DSi sort of functioned. Yeah. We're coming back around to Fire Emblem now. Again, yeah. something I will never play. Yeah. I've had friends really, like, go on about how good it is, but it's just not my thing. Last game I played in this sort of genre is Pokemon Conquest. Mm. I played that for a while, but then I ended up trading in to get, I think, the new 3DS, but... I just, I just, I can't get into these games. I don't know why. I just think, I just, I want to see Intelligent Systems take a break with Fire Emblem. I don't know, like it's... Is it Intelligent Systems? Is, is this one being, I don't know if this one is actually being is. developed by Intelligent Systems. Maybe it's not. But I do want to see, whatever Intelligent Systems are working on, I think, I think people are clamouring for Advance Wars coming back in some way, shape or form. Uh, I re- fondly have uh, great memories playing the first one on DS. The second one on DS kind of took a darker turn. I do um, like this trailer they're doing here. Yeah, the, the cinematics for all the games they're releasing. Right, yeah. they're but getting... it's tough because it's like, for me, I, I, I don't know. I feel CG trailers aren't something that they're really gets active, me excited on, because yeah. it's like, it's I can't game, play right? a game like that. Yeah. It's, it's not like, yeah. it's not, in, not indicative of the final product in a lot of ways. So, you know, Fire Emblem, it's one that, um, I don't know, I, lo- I appreciate the characters. I like Marth in Smash. I like... Uh, I like Lucina in Smash. I think they're cool sort of looking characters. I don't think I'm ever going to play the games or it's just not my kind of game. Yeah, but so I read up say. about this a bit actually. So what happens is you it's being advertised right here as kind of like the fable where you go through and you choose your own class and then you go like evil or good. Yeah. And then you kind of go, so yeah, you know, which class yeah. you take. But what happens is you go to the store and you buy the game and you choose black or white, basically. So okay. if you want to be light or you want to be dark. And then the game is the same up to the first six chapters, and then after the six chapters, it goes in the direction of the game that you bought. It's like oh. Pokemon. It's yeah. Kind so you of... buy a blue version, you buy a red version. See, that's tough for me because I think, you know, what I would rather they do is, you know, have maybe more of those decisions put in game and have yeah. it be less like arbitrary. Like yeah, yeah well, Mass Effect, right? Yeah. You know, the decision oh, to... Man. Well, it's <laughs> tough. Too many in Mass Effect. Well, you know, the, the thing about Mass Effect is, yes, it's it kind of in a lot of ways, it's this min-max idea of like, you do these answers to get Rogue or you do these yeah. answers to get Paragon. But at least you still have that sort of wiggle room where it can be like, you know, you can play one way or the other. The way yeah, you can you play between to. the old way through. Well, what they they said with this, like, the light version is very linear and it's sort of like a, just here's the typical gameplay. But if you go dark, it gets, uh, the gameplay is a little bit more difficult and the uh, story mode is not how Fire Emblem usually play out. So I think that's good as a fan of a series. I think someone would enjoy that because it gives them something different to the norm. But again... Never will I play this. The characters are drawn really well, though. Like, can I just say, like, they they're drawn really well. Oh, the yeah. art is great. Yeah, yeah I think I must well, yeah. say, I must say, they've really upped. Like for me, this looks like, uh, in terms of the actual in-game footage of the game, it looks like something that would be on new 3DS only. So it's, it's yeah. good to see that um, it, it's coming out for both, and I'm sure it'll be well received. I just, you know, it's tough because I think, for me, uh, I, I I do realize that the 3DS that is rats? probably. <laughs> Looks like Ganondorf. <laughs> yeah, Does look I like Ganondorf. What I noticed 
is they put a lot of time into this, into yeah. and into actually just literally the time that they talked about it on the direct. Um, it's one of the longer ones they had on there. Um, so yeah. I wonder if they're, are they trying to hammer this out? Are they trying to get the Western Maybe. market to like it? Because I know it's somewhat popular already, but it's not as big as, you know, forms in Mario, Pokemon, all yeah. that sort of stuff. And I don't think it ever will be, but it feels like they really want it to be. Yeah. I mean, in terms of moving on to sort of these concepts that they're, you know, that they're trying new things, they're trying different things. They've announced uh, Amiibo integration uh, with Animal Crossing, which... I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, I haven't really played any Animal Crossing. No. It's not my Never kind of... Again, different, different markets. It sells I see, gangbusters. I see but how people like this game. Yeah. I, honestly, I can't see how, why people like this game, but like... Oh, no, I do. I do, Chris. Because, you know, it's it's from that ilk of, like, it's The Sims. Creation. It's like, I want to, like, make houses. me a home, like, or... You know, so, it, so it's called Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. And it's got these sort of amiibo cards that are NFC chips inside them, I assume. Yeah. And Let they say, work with new 3DS. These so. cards, they should have done from the very beginning what Skylanders did. Because when you buy Skylanders, yeah. it comes with a figurine, which is what you use, and then it comes with a card. Now, Skylanders, as far as I'm aware, the card doesn't actually work itself, which is fair enough. But I wish you would have had the option, or at least you can use both, because if I want to get every amiibo, not only is it going to cost so much, but I'm, I'll need like a separate room to store them in. <laughs> if they release them with these cards, all of a sudden I just need to go out and buy a Pokemon binder, yeah. and I can keep all of these. I don't think I don't think Nintendo uh, are too concerned. I think they I don't I, I don't think they care about storage. I think people are like, well, you know, if they want the Amiibo, they'll find them. a no, way to storage, won. which is true, but, which is yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. This this reminds me of a little concept called the e-reader, which um, I don't know if you guys ever bought for the Game Boy Advance. But it was this yeah. idea of scanning cards up to the point where it um, went to, uh, you know, allowed you to play these downloadable yeah. sort of games. Yeah, I remember seeing it. I, I, I never even got an advance. I, I thought missed, it was a nifty that concept. Part, and I thought, I, I think this is pretty similar to what they're doing now. They had some Animal Crossing e-reader cards as well that were compatible with the GameCube version. So yeah. this is just another extension yeah. of that. But I think moving on to probably the most exciting news of the Direct. Yeah, I think well, before we do, can I just say, um, with the Yarn Yoshi Amiibo, mm. and now we've got the Amiibo cards, it's really good seeing them moving away from just the statue figurines. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So now um, an Amiibo can be anything. It can be this table, it can be a glass, it can be a, you know, whatever. So yeah. it's really interesting to so see. So you just have a Yarn Yoshi sitting inside your room. No one has to know. No one's going to be like, like oh, a figurine Amiibo. Like, yeah. you, can, you can have that... Put a little chain on it, have it hanging from your, your yeah. car. Yeah, your car. Like, <laughs> not the car. So. But I do think their bread and butter is going to be the figurines. Like I do, I do that's their money maker. That's yeah. what's that's what's generated the, the the sort of fandom it is now, and they really sort of undervalued how much they thought they were going to sell, and you know they're flying off shelves. They yeah. are. So yeah. I mean, it can be anything now, so it's just great. Yeah. Uh, so okay. yeah, moving on to the final piece of the Nintendo Direct Mario for Kart. April. I, I had the ending spoiled for me, but that's all right. Did I spoil it for you? Yeah, I didn't oh, have seen it yet. <laughs> we'll get to that when it happens. Well, look, I, I woke up to all this news, so I think um, the main little tidbit is we are aware and people have been anticipating it since the sort of first release of the DLC last year. It was very well received, The Legend of Zelda DLC. We now have the Animal Crossing DLC. Yep. Juice so come out in May. Characters. Yes. So we got we got how many new characters? We got four new characters. Yep. Four characters, uh, got, four cars, and... Well, I thought it was eight characters. tracks. Eight. Three characters, technically. Oh, oh really village two villager boy, yeah. 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 And we've got, f- uh, and we've got four. Uh, sorry, we've got eight new uh, vehicles. I think. Yeah. As yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. I think so. Um, and so, this um, this has been really one that's you know people have been excited about. People really want to see it and want to see what tracks that's are awesome. in the game. They didn't spoil the rest of the tracks which I think is good we want to have something be a bit of a surprise that's what they did with the last batch as well yeah exactly right but they did show the Animal Crossing track which uh, tends to uh, change based on the seasons which is very reminiscent of the main mechanic of Animal Crossing yeah it looks really good and um, so we thought it was Music's coming out point. in May. Yes, the music That's is one on thing point. Japanese games have over pretty much anything else is the fact that they put the time and effort into the soundtrack 
and they always sound good. Even do, games yeah. that you might not necessarily be into. Sorry, it's three races. Three races. Isabel, two villages, and Dry Bowser, which I am keen on. Four vehicles <laughs> and eight courses. Yeah. So uh, my my um, speculation probably here is that they'll do, they'll bring back, say, two tracks. Well, they'll put in yeah. Animal Crossing. I hope to see maybe another franchise incorporated, similar to how the F Zero yeah. track was put in. Yep. What do you guys reckon? Let's just, we'll ask. What do you reckon? Any idea, Aaron? For like, I think they've of... overdone the Rainbow Road. So let's. let's <laughs> no, no, Rainbow 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 <laughs> what, what, what tracks? We, what retro tracks do you like to see? Then? Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest. I don't um, think we Rainbow Road is anyone is anything that anyone wants to say. Yeah, we've what got I, three already. So what, what you need to see is uh, DK Jungle from from sixty four. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That, that was probably my favourite track I, from that. I would say DK Mountain. I think, DK, speaking of DK tracks, is probably one of my favourite. DK Mountain was awesome. I for think being, dash. yeah, for yeah. Like, dash. I wouldn't mind seeing like, a, like Warrior Arena. Was it Warrior Arena? Coliseum? Yeah. From, yeah. Uh, from yeah. the Wii version? My yeah. problem is, the game people I, I don't know, I feel like they've brought back a Warrior track being Goldmine. Yeah, fair enough. I yeah. don't know, they're going to bring back another Warrior track. Some um, of the Warrior tracks are the best. Yeah, I really. do like I do think so. The, the one from 64. Yeah. Obviously, fix it so there's not a thousand cuts to it. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think. Um, I think they could bring back. The, the, um, I, here's what I assume: they're bringing back. Let, let's say they bring back two tracks. Yeah. They'll bring back a Game Boy Advance one, update it. I really think mm-hmm. the the Game Boy Advance one they brought back uh, was was really the Mario Circuit track. one. Yeah, the Mario great, Circuit one circuit. was a great updated track, and they could do that with another GBA one. Yeah. I don't um, hate Super Circuit as maybe much. Uh, as mm. a lot of other people do, uh, but I think bring back that, bring back, uh, bring back a GameCube track. Baby Park. I would like to see Baby, Baby Park. Park. That was Baby my Baby favorite. Park would be good actually. Back on the DS version of it, I would do all five laps in one sort of like power slide. My yeah. thing about Baby Best Park. Best thing I ever did. My thing about Baby Park is you've seen Excite Bike Arena sort of take yeah. that wheel. Yeah, it's kind oh, of yeah, that's good in point. a lot of respects. And have it be sort of like, that simple track that you go around. The fact around. that it had five, like when I first played it, because I never played it on its original console. Mm. When I went on it on the DS version, I'm like, five laps? Like, yeah, well, actually, I think it was originally even seven. Yeah. Or mm. the version. That's uh, really cool. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. Um, I I don't know. Like, I, I don't know strategically what are they thinking. Like, are they thinking that, you know, we'll front load the DLC and have our best eight tracks be... The first sort yeah, of DLC because yeah. I look back on those eight tracks and I think that they're some of the best tracks in the game. Yeah, the F Zero track, the Hyrule track, yeah, really, cool. and I saw it out most the track, yeah. are by far some of my favorite tracks in the game. So I don't know. I'm I'm less excited about the Animal Crossing spin on it because I don't know if these tracks are going to be my favorite tracks in the game. Yeah, but I'm open to it. I'm very excited for it. And um, so the news came out that um, it's instead of coming out in May, they've pushed it up. Yeah, which is really week, good though. to see. Yeah. Um, it's always good to see that content sort of coming out earlier. They also have now announced, uh, you know, a, an amiibo. More costumes. More costumes for your me. I don't really care about costumes, but I think I, there's I people think who cool. will be into yeah. it. Yeah. I think it's something to be excited about. Um, it's it's this idea of like I get to dress up like my character rather than be the yeah. character. Yeah. yeah, It's cool if you like playing as your me. Yeah. It's just more options. Well, you, can, more, yeah. you can mix up a bit, combine a few different costumes. I like and... the fact that you can use other people's mi- um, amiibos for it. Yeah. Like, because I've got majority of the ones that you, the first lot of costumes you could get, but um, there was a few that I didn't have and my mate had them, so I just got them as guys as cross. I think they need more of sort of that integration for amiibos where it's not like, hey, you have to buy these and own these. Like what they're doing with the tap game, the fact mm. that you can you can like go if to someone you've else's got house. If you've got them, then it's yeah. kind of cool. But they, but they want it to be like that because yeah. they want you to essentially own everyone that you care about. Like, mm. so if it's if it's a game that you care about and you're like, like, like for me, for instance, I saw I saw that you know the Toad one got announced and I was like, well, I like Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker and that unlocks a mode in Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Yeah. So yeah. of course I'm going to buy the Toad Amiibo regardless of whether or not they might put a toad costume later on. Yeah. And if they decide to put a toad costume in, which I think was one of the ones they uh, announced. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I, can't sure remember. I think it was. Um, that's a bonus. So that's a bonus for me. Um, you know, I think what they've done with Mario Kart 8 is, you know, exemplary. And yeah. this is fantastic, what they need to do. It's their defining forward. game it is, as yeah. of yet. And like, I wish they had just put it out when the Wii U came out. Like, it would have been it would a, great be a very title. different world because uh, they six hundred percent increase in Wii U yeah. sales when Mario Kart came out. 
That's yeah. huge. But it's tough. It's tough to launch. I don't think any system is launched with no. a Mario Kart title. No. no. So it's this idea of... And, and Mario Kart is such an event when it gets released on every console. Like, I, you know, people get excited. It's, it's this idea of, like, let's all come around and play Mario Kart. Yeah. And I think, you know... I've heard I've heard some discussion about this idea of being that you know everyone's favorite Mario Kart is the first Mario Kart they play. Yeah, I, dis- I, I disagree no. with that. I couldn't disagree more with that. I you know obviously my first one was sixty four. Yeah, I think same. all of ours yeah. were. Was, yeah, yeah was 64. I love eight. I love eight so much. I think <laughs> eight is by far my favorite now. Yeah, hands yeah. down. Well, I do think out of all the sequential titles I've brought out with the Wii U, so Party and Smash Bros and stuff like that, it's the best. I, I personally feel it's got the most content from release, and it's been given a lot of Definitely, attention to DLC. Yeah. Concept from le- release is probably Smash, I feel, but I, I, I can definitely... When, when it comes to DLC, I've been really happy with the yeah, DLC yeah. with Kart. Um, well, speaking me. of that, the big, the big, big thing that came out from this Direct, which I stood out more in my mind than anything, and was the thing they had spoiled, but it didn't really matter because it was so exciting. Yeah. 200cc. Yeah. Now, that's huge because, like, obviously, once you get to Mirror, Mirror's fun, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. 200 just unlocks a whole new sort of... It's great, yeah. Especially for online play, because like, if, if they're going to have 200 as the online... It's going to require speed, a lot of skill it's play. Gonna, it's well, what I like in the directors, they're talking about how you need to, you'll need you need to learn how to break. Breaks. I was like, yeah. do people not just always power slide? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Who's breaking? I just I basically disable my break when I'm playing. <laughs> like, There's no need for it. No, I don't um, think the B button gets used at yeah. all, from my, from my understanding. I, I definitely don't use it. I so you guys know how quick 200cc is, like... Game Explain put up a comparison video between the. I think Nintendo put up a video oh, as well. Yeah. yeah, I saw Nintendo put up a video of I forget the track, um, but oh, it was Dolphin Shots. Yep. Yes. yes, I timed that shit, thirteen seconds. Wow. On the first lap. That's huge. Wow. So just the first lap, thirteen yeah. seconds. And I've, it's I've gonna take a lot of skill to play. It's gonna be. I've really noticed over time, and, and this is something. You know, the Nintendo 64 150cc feels very different from subsequent versions. Yes. And that's probably because that game had a lot of glitches and it wasn't necessarily the, the most well-structured yeah. sort of or smoothest Mario Kart game. Uh, I think, and that's what we're going to see with 200cc. We're going to yeah. see more of yeah. these um, really crazy sort of levels. And I'd like to see how they scale the AI because obviously 50cc, the AI are whatever. And then once you get out to 150, you get what I like to call the last lap clusterfuck. It's yeah. a bit annoying. You'll be in first the entire time, and all of a sudden, oh, look, seven red shells. Yeah. And then everyone all of a sudden has bullet. Like, yeah. cool. If if the AI scales up with it, and it's they're got, just like gone. ridiculous, which insane. they will, which will be annoying. But I, I hate when you're just stuck on two like two stars on the yeah. cut for so long. I've had that. Like today, um, I, but I must say, the rubber banding or how they distribute items in Mario Kart 8 has been the fairest I've seen. Yeah. And that's been a real motivator for, for myself as well, mm. wanting to play through those cups yeah. and get those trophies. Because, you know, in the past, it's been frustrating to the point where it's so unfair that you're just like, well, what, what is it? How am I going to get three stars in yeah. this? You know? The rubber banding was really, really bad in Wii. Mm, it was. And it was really bad in Double Dash as well. Where it was, where it was, ultimately you would get blue shell two or three times. Yeah. In the race. Whereas now so it's less lot, heard of. I a think. lot of that has to do with the fact that you can only hold one item now. Yeah. 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 I think Before that change have, has like, been three totally shells, crucial. And then three shells in your bank as well. I like the f- like it. Obviously, it's easy to have that, and I really like the fact that you could be really sneaky with it and go, "All right, I'm going to shoot my green shell off now and then smash out three red shells." Yeah. But I think competitively, it's more difficult it's way... to, to only have one item. Yeah. And the fact that, I mean, I do it a lot, like, not to brag, but I spend a lot of time in first place. So Cam, is I, Cam is a good Mario. I, 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 it's one of those games I'm good at. So I'll hold green shell, and I'll just have it ready to shoot. I'll An item box will be coming up, and I'll see someone's behind me. Shoot off the shell, grab a new item. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. usually a coin anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's good for the quick shoot-offs. And the same with Banana. Um, like if, if I know an item box is coming up, I'll shoot in front of me so that they don't see it behind me. Yeah. Grab a new item, and if it's another banana shell, then I can lay it next to it. A banana shell. A, I always say banana item? shell. A banana. banana peel. Um, I, and banana then shell. leave that next to it. And They're gonna steal that for the next one. Do yeah. I? I can't say banana peel when I'm talking about it. I'll always say banana shell. I hate it. <laughs> all in all, you guys pretty happy one. with the direct then? Yeah, I thought it was I really think, good. Yeah. Yeah. Huge direct. I would uh, say it's probably one of the best directs I've seen in, in a while from yeah. them. Basically, I don't want to say it's, it, it's definitely the best direct I've had this year. Yeah. Um, 
That's not yep. saying much. They've had a couple. Of, no, they've had a couple of directs. This is saying like E three being around the corner as well. Yeah, yeah, we were two months away, aren't we? Yeah. So, so this is the thing. There won't um, be one. I I don't remember what it got announced at the E three direct last year, but I do remember it generated a lot of buzz. So if this is what's in the direct now to get it out of the way for E three, I think E three. Um, he's going to be. Good. He's going to be really good. I think we should maybe just go around the table, speculate on what we think we might see. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned Chris that you thought Metroid might be. Yeah. Well, well, I think we need to see what Retro is working on, and they've, they've been done with Tropical Freeze for a couple of years now. I I'd think. say probably two years. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd say. So, so I mean, they got... what are they working on? They've done three Donkey Kong games, and so they did. They did the three primes, mm-hmm. and then they did. Then it, it had, they did the other M? No, that was that was no, Ninja. No, that was it. Team Ninja. And then they've done the three Donkey Kong games. Yeah. So, uh, I guess technically two because they ported Donkey Kong Country Returns to the DS, the mm-hmm. 3DS. So, like, what are they doing? You know, they have mm-hmm. to be doing something. And Metroid is a thing that that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. And yeah. I personally would love Metroid on, on the Wii. I do think they have something behind the scenes they're waiting to unveil, but we have to wait and see for that. Yeah, whether it's a new IP or whether it's Metroid, yeah. it, it needs to be something, and, and we will definitely see Star Fox at E3. Yeah, you know? I think Star Fox is a lock as the big sort of marquee Wii U title. It's tough. So will talking about the Legend else? of Zelda delay, it's like I don't know if Star Fox is enough to get people excited for yeah. Wii U. Yeah. This I feel that's probably something we should talk about too. The Legend of Zelda delay that was insane. yeah, it ruined my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because I think you know it's you. We, we were so determined. We were so. Uh, and they were so determined to sell it yeah. to us. It was like, we promise, we promise, we promise. They said this it about is not getting times, delayed. They did. They really and did. And they, they had a great reputation after bringing out Smash Bros. early. Captain Toad early. Yeah. Um, they, they were on a really good streak there. It was just unfortunate what's happened with Zelda. But Zelda's always going to be delayed, I think. It's, it's just the takeaway. I think the core fans and even casual fans, look, they know that the more time they take to do it now, the better the game will be. And I, I'm calling it now. This game is going to be a 300 hour plus game. I think it's basically going to be Elder Scrolls Nine. The I don't Zelda. know. I think no. it will, dude. Do you I have to the world is huge. I don't mean core game story, core story. I mean collectibles and exploring. And stuff. No, I think the world is is huge. I don't think the world's full of characters or people or life yet. And I think that's why they delayed it. If that's I think a delay the reason, then I'm all for it. Well, of course, I'm, I'm for the delay from the perspective of the game not being ready and yeah, you yeah. want to release the best version of a game when it comes out. What the issue is now is can they get it together enough where their um, lofty sort of expectations of what they have this new nebulous open world Zelda to be, can they deliver on that and have it be a compelling experience? Where Because no one wants to ride a horse in this open vast landscape for 20 minutes no. and not have this you know like i could just totally see them you know ditching this concept of fast traveling or whatever you know like yeah. not borrowing from those games and 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 you know that could be a, maybe a tiring concept but look i have every faith they always get these that seem to get these zelda games quite right every zelda game on a console has been delayed it has so just take that from what you will yeah with. there you go it's um you know i think People, there's been some sort of speculation that it might sort of again we'll see a similar Twilight Princess situation yep. where it where we have a version for Wii U and we have a version for the NX. Yeah. Um, look, I don't think that's... I don't buy into that. No, it's... I don't think that's going to happen. But I do think you know it's like kind of how Skyward Sword was the Wii sort of swan song. Mm. Yep. This is going to be a Wii U sort of swan song, and that's shown by the fact that they even said when they delayed the game that. You know, we're not showing it at E3 at, yeah, all. at all. We're not mentioning it this year, I think, is is the takeaway. So, That's to me, it doesn't thing. seem... Well, it doesn't seem like it's going to be early 2016. It seems to me like it's going to be, you know, summer 2016. Yeah, like, is this a, it's this gonna is be, a year long delay? I, I have no gonna, doubt we'll do another one November. of these for E3 anyway, oh, as well. Yeah. So, we can go over all that again um, when that comes around. Yeah. Um, big points from this podcast, uh, from this direct, that you guys liked? Mario Kart, Lucas... Um, N64 games on the Virtual Console, I'd say, yeah. I like the fact that it was more of a direct... Like, it was actually direct, direct. with you with what the game was. They didn't have all the, like, silly playing with... When they announced the Amiibos, when they had the whole, like, showdown with Iowa. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That was for E3. That was for the Spectre. 
Yeah, like I think I think that's, that's cool, fun. But... I think that adds to a presentation and it, it adds to the conversation. I just but this like one's how this just one a business, business direct. They're just like, business. here we go, bang, 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 bang. Here's bang. what's coming. But you'll get more of that get in ready. E3, I can yeah, assure exactly. you. We're going to see that at E3. I think the big thing I like about it was um, the, the ballot and actually asking people yeah, the what ballot, they wanted. And I, yeah. I want to see more of that for other games and you know asking more of the customers, hey, what do you guys want? Yeah. Um, because I, I know personally, sometimes I find myself scratching my head saying, what is being talked about in the yeah. Nintendo boardroom? Like, how yeah, I know. Like, like, mm. Yeah, um, I think that's something moving forward that shows that this company is willing to listen and it's willing to take more risks and get out there more. And I think that that's something, hopefully, uh, will, well, that will pay off for them. I want to see, you know, I think competition's great. I want to see all of the game companies doing well. I don't want to move to this idea of the one console future. I want to see... Everyone have Nintendo those opportunities to well. and yeah. to produce their own hardware. And Nintendo are great at We're calling that. it now. There's going to be a ballot for the new console name. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be the new thing. I love yeah. to see ballots. Yeah, just everything. call it the code name, okay? So the code name NX. Just release that. Like you know, some of these code names have been really cool. Like the DS was Project Nitro. The GameCube was called the Dolphin. Dolphin like the uh, Nintendo 64 is called the Ultra 64. Like yeah. these are cool. Co- just Project release Cafe. the code name. Video Project Cafe. Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Better than Wii U, yeah, you yeah. know. I don't know what they're going to come up with for a name, um, and and uh, you know, I just think the NX. Uh, I'm I'm predicting right now we're not going to hear anything about it this year. We'll hear about more about it in E3 2016. Yeah, I agree. So I think the only reason they announced it was to show that we are still in the hardware making business because the mobile sort of announcement would generate that kind of speculation. That's the only reason they announced that. But um, yeah. look, the direct was incredible. I'm top really excited three. for Mario Kart. Top three for this one. So I think the Mario Kart in general, but 200cc specifically. Yep. The ballot was really, really cool. Um, and I You're think... so ready to get fucked over by computer AI. Oh, right? absolutely. <laughs> yeah. no. uh, and the next... and then, wait for that. <laughs> uh, and then um, just the, the f- announcement of what titles are on the 64 emulator, uh, the 64 virtual console oh, fact actually, that, they announced uh, Paper Mario is coming out yeah, as well, Paper so Mario. Yeah. I think the fact that we get DK and Mario 64 like two like triple A titles and not just oh yeah we're releasing you know this and that big games that people played the crap out mm. of uh, and I think it's cool that people finally have a version of Donkey Kong that they don't need to pay 100 to yeah, 300 yeah, dollars exactly. for yeah exactly because that, that banana card is like 100 dollars with yeah, the expansion easy. pack um, so I think that I think it was, it was, a, it was a definitely a really good direct it, said what needed to be said i think it went a little long in a few things obviously they're trying to get fire emblem and stuff across yeah. i don't think it ever will there's always like a lull now. in the middle yeah, yeah which yeah. i mean you can't, you all, can't right. all be rise <laughs> that's gonna, gonna well that's the thing points. it's like it's about varying sort of people and different tastes and i think they're hitting all those tastes they're hitting a they're, lot of different markets yeah, right. exactly they've got the shooter they've got the they've got the racer they've got the fighter They've got the RPGs. They've got the very Japanese sort of wacky RPGs. They've got the indie titles. The All the cogs are there for a successful company. It's just about getting the games out there. And I think Nintendo has, the, has a real opportunity now with a lot of the exclusive titles they have yeah. to make a real run at it because we're not hearing much from Sony. We aren't hearing as much from Microsoft as well. We've got Halo coming, uh, Crackdown yeah. coming at some point, and, and Phantom Dust. But the, the Nintendo titles are really strong and it's just a matter of ensuring that the next two years for yeah. Wii U is, is s- s- consistent. Yeah. There are consistent titles for it leading up to a big launch for NX. And I think yeah. the big launch for NX, if you can imagine, I, I foresee a situation with a big Mario game launching that console. Oh, huge, really huge, strong huge. sort of yeah. lineup from the get-go because they do not want to make the same mistakes. Yeah, Miyamoto said Wii. that he wants Mario to sort of be the usher in for every console yeah so if, if that's if that's i'd rather not see a game like galaxy or a new mario game on the wii u if it means we're getting a launch game for the nx oh yeah no i definitely think we'd be getting it on the nx like just... I, I think the big ones for me on it were um the new characters for smash yeah uh, plus the ballot like yeah. i said before um the new dlc for cart was huge um uh, i really liked everything we saw in splatoon we're all excited for splatoon yes. that's all happening um, and the, the other one, just to get an honorable mention, is Yoshi's Blue World. Blue yeah, um, those, those are the big Yoshi's ones. Yoshi's adorable me. world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think yeah, all round, a lot of good content came out. A lot of uh, strictly Nintendo IP as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, 
going to be really good. I think yeah, we're, we're ushering in a new age of Nintendo. It's the age of DLC. It's the age of accessories. So I think it's, it's the age of mobile. And yeah, the fact that you it's the age of listening to their fans as well. Hopefully, I think yeah. Nintendo are going in a Hopefully. really, really positive direction, and they just need to keep the momentum going. And they'll they'll be able to compete with Sony. They'll be able to compete with Microsoft. And yeah. I think that's what they need. They're finally starting to hit it. And as long as they keep going like they're going, the new NX will be the new gen console. Yeah. And I think they have an advantage if they can do it properly. Because Nintendo, uh, sorry, uh, Sony and Microsoft aren't going to release another one for you know another yeah. decade. So they, oh, I don't know, well, not not a full decade, a but they, cycle. they release mm. them like every eight years, and maybe every every five I think years. The cycle is now five shorter. or six. Either way, Nintendo will have a good few years there of being the newest thing, and if they can hit the power, if they can have an actual uh, hardware run as smooth as a PS4 or an Xbox. Uh, 720 and Xbox One, um, Xbox <laughs> then they, well, they really have it. it. I would love to see a computer, like a you know a personal computer strength Wii console. Jeez, that would um, be good. Cool. It'd be it'd be really good to see, and that just would yeah. open a lot of doors for them. I mean, they started it off with the Wii U. The fact that you can even get like a, a well running Call of Duty on a Wii on a Nintendo console, oh yeah, that yeah. was big. Um, so as long as they keep going with that, they'll be fine. Anyway. Uh, look, looking forward, I think the next one of these we might do is maybe E3 or maybe if a new game comes out, we can play that and see what Yeah, well, uh, what do we got next? I think the next big thing is the Mewtwo DLC. Yeah. Yep. So we could maybe do... There could be a Smash on Bros. one in the future, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, I think uh, a Smash Bros. Kart, for sure. Yeah. Smash Bros. Mario Kart, April's going to be a big month and, and look, we look forward to playing those games and, and having a chat about it. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, thank you for listening to the Games Podcast, our first attempt at doing one of these. We're talking a little bit about the Nintendo Direct for the 1st of April, 2015. Covered a lot of topics here, and hopefully we'll be able to cover a lot more in the future. Possibly look at doing some game reviews and more events like E3 and other Directs. So, again, thank you for listening to the Games